So you notice how we're not asking you to sit? Because for a dog panting this heavy, because she's a shorter muscle dog, shorter muscle yeah. dogs over feet faster, her sitting makes it harder for her to pant and cool herself down. Hi, this is Nadira with Animal Talks on the Talk of San Diego, and I am here today with Linda at the Chula Vista Animal Care Facility. Welcome, Linda. Hello, thank you for having us here today. Well, I'm really excited to hear about um, how we can keep our animals safe this summer, and I know you have a lot of great info to share with everybody at home. Absolutely. So, this marks the first day week of summer, so happy summer, everyone. And we have been getting some unexpected hot temperatures in our June gloom in San Diego. So we want to talk about how to keep your pets healthy and safe when you're taking them out to all the events that San Diego has to offer us. And also how to keep them comfortable at home when you're away. Okay, great. Well, I'm really excited to hear about that because I know a little bit earlier I was mentioning about my dog. And you know, when I take them for walks, I was wondering how the asphalt was affecting them. Because sometimes they'd be a little bit further away from home. And so I'd be excited to hear about how we can keep our animals safe on the asphalt, the sidewalks, and then, you know, if we should have water with them or how far away we should be taking them on our walks since it's really hot right now. Yes. So the first thing is always have water with you. No matter how short of a distance you think you're going to go, you should always have water. Because most people, when you're walking, you have water for yourself. So always have some fresh water for your pet. The general rule of thumb is if you can walk barefooted, then your pet can walk barefooted. Okay, so that's the, that's the biggest rule of thumb. But we do have a little chart here of what the temperatures are. And people are really surprised. At 77 degrees, the asphalt temperature is actually 125 degrees. A dog's paw starts burning within 60 seconds at 125 degrees. Mm -hmm. So that's already causing damage, and we're thinking, it's only in the high 70s, that's not bad. So if you ever notice people's dogs are doing a little prancing around and such, that's because the dogs are trying to keep moving and not burning their paw pads. And as you can see with the chart, as temperature rises, it gets crazy hot on that asphalt. From 86 degrees um, air temperature, it goes to 135. And just one degree higher of air temperature, it goes all the way up to 143 degrees on the asphalt. So that's crazy hot. So you need to remember that. So once again, fresh water, and if you can walk barefooted, your pet can walk barefooted. But if you can't walk barefooted, either keep your pet at home or start teaching your pet how to walk, wear those protective paw shoes. That's why okay. they're made to help keep the dog's um, paws safe from burning. Oh, thank you. Because I was going to ask you, what if you were out and their paws burned? Or what happens if somebody didn't know this and that had already happened? What should they do to um, help alleviate that? They need to get medical care. They need to go to their veterinarian because with a burn, you can start getting a severe infection. Mm -hmm. So they do need to go to their veterinarian and get some medical care okay. on those burns. Okay, thank you. And I know you have some more exciting news and info to share with us, so I'm well, really excited about this. Yes, we're going to talk about keeping cool at home. So with this hot weather, you know, there's indoor dogs and there's outdoor dogs that people keep outside during the daytime when they're at work and such. So for the indoor dogs, set your air conditioning to 78 degrees. You don't need to have your air conditioning like super frigid for your dog. 78 degrees in the house is a nice comfortable temperature for your indoor pet to be. Okay. The outdoor dogs have a little bit harder time, so we want to make sure that we have lots of options for the outdoor dogs. First of all, plenty of fresh, clean water. Like, get a giant bowl. Um, always make sure that your dog has the ability to get to shade throughout the day. Just think, just don't think, oh, there's shade here in the morning. You gotta really look at the way your backyard is set up to make sure there's shade throughout the day while you're gone. And then next, hey, have a kitty pool. We have some kitty pools here at the shelter that our shelter dogs like to dive in on hot days. So have a kitty pool for them. What I really like to do is make popsicles for the dogs. And we're going to show and do a little demonstration how to make our popsicles. Right, and it's I really like popsicles easy. too. <laughs> These are going to be a little bit meatier flavored. So we have our Kong toy. None of you are familiar with Kongs. Kongs are awesome. They come in lots of different sizes, so different size for your pets. Our dogs here at the shelters, a lot of our higher energy dogs, get a frozen Kong in their kennel every other day to keep them occupied. We stuff them with some good stuff. 
To bake a popsicle though, you're gonna take some peanut butter, because most dogs love peanut butter, and do the creamy kind, not the crunchy kind. Okay, so use your creamy peanut butter, because we wanna use this as a sealant, and you only need a little bit. Just a dab will do ya. So you just put a little bit there to seal the small bottom of it. And then what you do is you're gonna put it in a mug or a cup or something like that that will fit in your freezer. Yeah, I know this looks pretty hideous, but what this is um, is some canned dog food that I put in here with some water and we shake it up really good. You can use unseasoned vegetable broth, unseasoned um, chicken or beef broth that you make at home, but you don't want any seasons in it. You know, we don't want any pepper or garlic or anything like that for our dogs. So then you just fill this up, and that little dab of peanut butter is our sealant, so it stays there. Put this in the freezer overnight in the morning, give it to your dog, and he'll sit there and lick that yummy, popsicle, brothy flavor, and that helps, helps keep them cool. So that's how you make a doggy popsicle. And you can add like frozen peas, frozen carrots in there, little tiny tr extra treats that your dogs likes. But the main thing is to have that core of a uh, nice tasty doggy broth as your popsicle. And that's how you make a doggy popsicle. You keep your dog cool these summer months. Well, it looks really good. <laughs> <laughs> so how long does that last? How long will that last with the one popsicle? Well, it's gonna depend on several things. A, how good your dog is at getting into there. We have a dog here at the shelter, Joe, who's available for adoption, and he can go through a frozen popsicle in about 20 minutes. And it also depends also on your air temperature. Is it a hotter day? Is it a cooler day? Because just like a kid with their popsicle, if you're standing around, it can melt really fast on really hot days. Yeah. So it varies, but it's a great way. And it's also a great toy for the dog to stay occupied. Um, it's a mental toy because they have to figure out how to get the, um, the goodies out of the Kong. And stimulating them mentally is always healthy for the dogs. Great, well, that looks like such a great treat. So not only is it great nutritionally and healthy that way, but also keeps their mind sharp. Absolutely. Thank you very much, Linda, for sharing with us how we can keep our animals safe, healthy, and cool. Thank you for having us. And so I know that there's one more thing you wanted to share before we go this morning, and I'd love to hear all about it. Well, for the month of June, we have the Dog Days of Summer, where all the adoption fees for every dog at the shelter is only $25. That includes them being spayed or neutered, microchipped, currently vaccinated. And we have lots of dogs, so there's a lot of dogs here that need great homes, so stop on by. Our adoption hours are Tuesday through Friday from 10 to 4, Saturday from 10 to 3. Our website is www.cbacf.org, which is easy, which is the initials for the Chula Vista Animal Care Facility. And from there, you can see all of our available pets. But the best thing to do is come down and meet them in person. Yeah, I was walking around before I came in here with Linda, and there's so many cute pets, and I think I might leave with one today. <laughs> <laughs> this is Nadira Bray with Animals Talk on the Talk of San Diego. So remember to keep your animals safe, healthy, and cool this summer. <laughs>